Hello, my friend Jennifer Edwards, psychic medium. How are you this Friday afternoon? I'm fantastic. Thanks, Janine Castle. I'm really, really well and enjoying the end of the week. What cup of tea are you drinking today? Today, I'm in my favourite little cup and I'm drinking a lovely ginger and lemon tea. Okay. Well, it's relaxing and also it's so cold here. So really yeah. cold. Yep. Really cold. I'm up in Queensland and it's a little bit uh, overcast. So I thought I'd have some chai. So I'm having oh, some chai with you. Very so. nice. Very cheers nice. Cheers to a big week. Yes, cheers. Cheers, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the end of the week. Now, today so, we're going to talk about Australia. Yay. We are going to talk about Australia and uh, we're going to have a look at what's happening with Australia, what has been happening, why it's happening and what's going to happen in the near future. Yeah, because, you know, Victoria, where I am, we are like the leprosy people of the of Australia. No one wow. wants to come here. No one wants to see us. And no. so, you know, we're pretty well shut off. So um, it, I think some, um, it'd be interesting for everyone to talk about Australia, um, you know, because we're having a bit of a flux here. So I thought that mm, was... We're having a crisis indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think about this topic a lot in my astrology brain. So, so, so where should we start? Well, why don't you give me some information about the rest of this year astrologically um, for Australia, do you think? Do you want to start there? Okay, well, let's first talk about the Australia birth chart. Mm. And yes, countries have charts. Australia is a particularly easy one. So is America and the UK because we haven't had a change of, uh, uh, a change of rulership in quite a while, which means there's a set date, and there's even a set time. So I use the Australia chart that's 1788, which is the early settlement date. It's very controversial, I know, because it's based on Australia Day. Whether you like Australia Day or not, it gets a lot of attention. So we all talk about Australia on Australia Day. So again, whether you think that's right or wrong, we still talk about it on that day. So that's the beginning of white Australia. So that makes us an Aquarius nation. Uh, New Zealand's also an Aquarius nation, interestingly enough, and we get along really well with New Zealand. So Aquarius nation, I can't think of any others except New Zealand. We're very rebellious by nature. So we value freedom, we value democracy, and we're quite possibly one of the strongest democracies on the planet. We value equality, multiculturalism, anti-discrimination, and we're no respecters of authority, Australians. So that's why we have the larrikinism here in Australia, because we're not very big on looking up to people. So we've got tall poppy syndrome here, which is very, very Aquarius. Um, we don't like people putting us around, we just like freedom to do whatever we want. That's right. Um, we're also born, um, uh, we, we were born from a population of outcasts, convicts, which is very Aquarius. We're a nation of migrants and refugees and odd bots from all over the place, white, brown, black or otherwise. So we're a real mixed bag of individuals here in Australia. So Australia not only is some... Aquarius, it has four to five planets in Aquarius. So we're very, very Aquarian as a nation. And we only have really 10 planets to talk about. And there's five in, us, in the Australian chart. So we're not just any Aquarius nation. We're very, very Aquarius. We're extremely oh. Aquarius. And I think of Aquarius as not only democracy when we're talking about a country, but we're talking about a government that uh, that wants to make every every uh, minority group heard, and that is a very difficult thing. There are other governments that don't care about minorities, 
Australia is very uh, respectful of minorities. We're very respectful of gender as well here. And for that reason, we're a country of bureaucracy. So we're democracy and bureaucracy. Queries wow. for bureaucracy. You have to have a strong bureaucracy to have equality, political equality. Mm. So what are your thoughts on that, Jennifer? Well, it sounds pretty well spot on, doesn't it? I was wondering, yeah. do, um, do astrologers ever talk about, you know, how the Southern Cross came into being over our skies when we were settled by uh, the Caucasian race from England? I've always wondered, have astrologers ever talked about that? Because it seems to me to be a phenomenal thing to have happened. Yeah, look, I, I don't know much about that. I'm actually an appalling astronomer and other people are much better than me. You probably know more about it than me. Well, I was just interested because whether it affected astrology over Australia because even the Indigenous people said it only came when the white man came to Australia. Really? I'm going to look that up. Now, would you look that up? Because it's just something I'm very curious about, whether it affected our astrological heavens at all. Because uh, yeah. it's a curious thing, isn't it? Good point, good point. Mm -hmm. Something that is very special about our chart in Australia is we have the, the planet, the sun, which we think of as a planet in astrology, sitting right on our ascendant or our rising sign. Now, our rising sign is Aquarius as well. Wow. And our rising sign is the most important part in our chart, and that's at 9 o'clock in the chart. If you go into Google Images Australian birth chart, you'll see it. Okay. So at the point at 9 o'clock, whatever planet is sitting there, and usually there's nothing there, whatever planet there totally trumps everything in the chart so for Australia we don't have an empty rising sign area we have the Sun bang right there and so what does that mean that is why they call us the lucky country okay the Sun is radiant the Sun is full of energy and life it's full of potentially happiness as well and success because the Sun does represent um, all masculine types of success okay wow. and it represents great strength so when the sun's on the rising sign of a human we would say this is one very lucky human this is one very charismatic bold confident human so likewise in Australia we're very confident people we're not showy people we don't show off that's not Aquarius Aquarius doesn't show off but we are very confident about our identity so we're very brave too that's where the Anzacs came from mm. um, so, so the does, sun, sorry Janine does that mean that we've got some good things happening for Australia in the future do you think well, that's what I can talk about next because there's a whole lot going on hovering around the ascendant. Whoa. So what has been happening to date is we've been in a depression, okay? So Saturn has been going through our 12th house, which is behind the ascendant, for the last three years. If this chart was a human's chart, I'd say it would be a depression but economically, we're going to call it a recession. Now, I know the government just announced last month that we're in a recession, but really looking at our chart, we've been going through a recession for three years. So things haven't been good for a while now. And I think this COVID crisis has just come at the, the end stage of it. And, and it's really the end of a, a 29, 30 year cycle. So this is really the ending of a lot of um, times of despair for us Australians. So that means there are good times coming. Yes. Okay. All right. Everyone wants to hear that. I know when you turn on the news, you think, heck, this has been, this is really awful. I think it's been awful for a while, but now it's getting worse. And it seems like it's never gonna end. Yeah. And it really is going to end. So what are the planets doing, do you think, for this year, for the rest okay. of this year? So when COVID started, we had the three heavy planets sitting on our Mercury in the 12th house. 
So that means our three heavies, which is Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn, were sitting on our poor Mercury. Now, Mercury in the 12th house in a human means that we don't like to say very much. We're not very outspoken or loud people. We like to be quite reserved with our speech. But when it comes to a country, Mercury represents our ability to move, our ability to communicate, to transmit information around our country. So Mercury means uh, our ability to travel short and long distances around our country, our ability to communicate via cars, trucks, boats, planes, all forms of transport. It's about our media, it's about education, and interestingly, it's not about health. Oh. So I'm figuring that this COVID crisis for Australia is not actually about health. It's really about mercury issues. So it's about transport, travel, education, media, etc. So when these planets were sitting on our poor Mercury, two things were going on. One is we had a contraction. So that's where we started to have rules and limitations about what we could do here. And that, that started since January, February, and it's still happening now. So all this COVID time, We've had restrictions to our Mercury, our ability to communicate and move and touch each other and be with each other. And Mercury is a very social planet. So those planets are going to move on, okay? And they're going to move on at the end of the year. And that's when we get all of this relief and it's all going to be over. Well, what are your thoughts on that? I'm really happy to hear that, right, because I'm over it to be honest what what came to mind for me while you were talking janine is um would it be that mercury's in the 12th house house there of australia would that mean also that um perhaps this is a time for australians to really think about things you know to go because it's 12th house so 12th house you've taught me is a is a house of where people tend to be hidden or quiet or they're introverted more. Yes. So I'm sort of wondering whether that's also about us being forced to be more introverted, more insular, uh, to think about where we're at in our lives, maybe. Um, yep. Because I, sort of, I I had an interesting thing yesterday, Janine. I think it was yesterday. Um. Um. I had a client come and she um, she she was told by spirit that um, these next five months or six months or so were for her to to sort herself out, to go inward, sort herself out, communicate with herself, find out all her issues and, and heal, right? And I'm just wondering whether we could apply that to Australia. Do you think that would fit? Yeah, definitely. Because all of these... Um, planets in Capricorn are happening in our 12th house which is a very insular place mm. it's a it's a place of the unconscious it's the cave it's the retreat it's it's the spare room it's the it's actually the basement really um, it is forcing us Australians to go underground and really have a look at uh, all topics to do with mercury mm -hmm. so our schooling has to go underground you know we've got to find other ways of communicating we've got to improve our internet so that we can talk on zoom like we are today so i, th I think you're right if we translate it from human to nation we do have to go underground and have a, a deep look at what's going on behind the scenes in our own lives and nationally of course yeah, and um, because the media, as you know, everyone's complaining about the media, or a lot of people are, and the media are not reporting a lot of things, really, truthfully, yeah. um, and sensationalising things. They've always done that. But I think we've got time now to think about that and maybe inquire more into that. And I always think that's a good thing uh, yeah. to do. So that sounds very Mercurian to me. It is. And I, my prediction here, I don't know what you think, is I'm sure that this is all going to head towards the Senate inquiry. One of 
one of the topics will be looking into misconduct with the media. Wow. That's, that's what I think. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's be really good. And I sort of feel like um, maybe Mercury too would be involved with um, new innovations perhaps coming from Australia. Would that fit in? Well, Mercury does rule technology, not necessarily new technology, that's, that's uh, Uranus, but certainly day-to-day -day technology. So it rules computers. So, so we had this restriction in some areas, a restriction that was leading us to more computer-based work. And you were telling me that you couldn't buy a laptop yep. when you went shopping the other day. Mm. So, you know, the cost of computer, sorry, the availability of computers has been restricted for sure. Yeah. So it's, it's just so interesting when you're talking about Mercury there and how much of a wide uh, impact it really does have. Yeah, yeah, Mercury's trade, you know, and for us, Mercury in the 12th house is very good for international trade. So this is what is badly for us. And this is what has led to our, our depression or our recession is the limitation around trade and tourism. And tourism relies on transport. And here in Queensland, we have a dead tourist industry. Yeah, no, I, think no everywhere. I think everywhere, Janine. Yeah. So moving on, what would be another planet you'd like to look at that impacts this year? Okay, well, the good thing, though, is that Jupiter was hitting our Mercury at the same time. So we had a contraction, but then we also had an expansion. So Jupiter uh, can make some people really profit out of the restrictions. Oh. So there are certain industries that have really prospered and grown significantly, one of which is technology the mm -hmm. other is um media the media have definitely had a feast have they not yes there's no journalism that's journalist that's out of work at the moment <laughs> <laughs> we've had to um had to really grow other areas i mean a lot of people have had job seekers job keeper as well and so for all the people that are, have really suffered financially there's a lot of people who've taken big holiday yes, and true. and said you know this has been really good for them yeah so it hasn't all been bad but uh the good news is that all these planets except pluto will come out onto the rising sign at the end of the year but maybe you can tell me what you think is going to happen between here which is july and the end of the year Oh, well, I, I still think we've got some tough times to go through. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was just that I feel, Janine, that um, between September and December this year, there is also some difficulty coming outside of that. Um, I feel it's going to happen outside of Australia, but it will impact on us quite substantially. And I do feel maybe coming from the North America side, maybe across the ocean, maybe affecting the islands um, and even Japan, maybe down to Australia. And I do feel that there may be um, a little more of an impact in New Zealand. And so I think we may be extending our hand to New Zealand in an act of a greater friendship than we ever have in the past. Uh, in, a, in a sort of a um, humanitarian way. So maybe they have some problems with earth movements, with um, flooding or something, and that we have to extend our goodwill to them regarding maybe um, food, maybe refugees, maybe um, um, some sort of support monetary even to help them through a tough time. Um, so I feel Australia is going to be impacted by that, especially along the East Coast, but not too bad. I feel the rest of Australia will be pretty good. So um, I do feel there's going to be a little bit of a more tough time coming between September and December. I could be wrong. It might go, might go into January, February. But I, I do I have been feeling for last year that there's something else outside of health that may be coming. What do you think? Yeah, well, look, if, the, if we were looking at a birth chart, we would say 
This is, these are the labour pains mm. that start before you give birth to a new human, a new baby or a new country. So birth is very painful. So this is the yep. build up to birth and yep. it's going to be the toughest phase. This is the toughest phase in the astrological cycle. It's a Saturn cycle. Mm. But what I think is going to happen after December is we have Saturn and Jupiter hitting the rising sign, which is where the sun is. So yeah. that's very big. That happens once every 30 years. And last time this happened, we came out of the recession in the late 80s. So likewise, we'll come out of this period of recession as well. And I think what will happen is it will be triggered by a big change in government. Now, either we'll have a change in leadership, and I know an election's not due now for a couple of years, but there'll be a change within the government somehow, whether our leader goes or comes or the government announced something quite major that has a big impact on Australia. It's something like that. Have you had any inspiration on, on that one, Jen? Well, that's really interesting because... Say something happened to America, there was an earth movement or something, um, it would impact us fairly, fairly heavily, I would think. And or if we had some impact from the earth ourselves, um, I guess it would depend on how the government handles that or whether they can or what the aftermath is. Right, so we're an island at the end of the world, but that doesn't um, protect us really from what happens if the uh, rest half the world goes a bit pear shaped for a while. We may have to deal with a lot of um, people wanting to come here. Uh, there's maybe job problems, maybe rebuilding because they didn't handle the fire rebuild very well, have they? So, I think time either. I think if we have another disaster and they don't handle that well, I can imagine that the population won't be too happy with the government. So you may be right. I yeah, also the Senate inquiry into the co handling COVID, yeah, yeah, handling, you know, how the media handled it, whatever. And I think there'll be big pressure on the government to do some big changes. Yeah, and which they won't want to whatever do. happens. No, whatever happens with the government in January is going to set the stage for what happens next year. And I believe we have a brand new phase starting next year. So I don't think this is going to go on forever. In fact, it's going to do a big turn mm. at the end of the year for the better. We have a lot of work to do. We've got Saturn moving into our first house. We've got a lot of work to do on a very physical level. First house is the physical. It's the land. It's about, you know, is the government going to make some changes that are going to affect the land and the distribution of people around the cities and around agricultural areas? There'll be big changes. So we've got a lot of work to do, but Jupiter is also going to be in there too, and that's a very prosperous time. So I think the next uh, 2021 and 22 are going to be quite prosperous if we work really hard at it. Well, that's so fascinating because it sort of fits in with what I'm saying because if we have to rebuild, of course, there'll be work. Mm. And the government, I've always said that the government will stimulate the economy with money for infrastructure and I felt that would be at the end of the year and that certainly fits in the beginning of next year. And mm. I think that's all good. So if we do have changes of power, not so much party, but positions of power within the government, there may be, do you think, some more charismatic or more um, uh, more aware politicians that may come into uh, positions of power where they insist on helping maybe the small business, the medium-sized business, the micro-businesses a bit more, and that would certainly be a change. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who the change of government was around 1990, um, but I know that Keating was finishing his time. I can't remember what happened after that, whether it was John Howard. And then we had a period of economic growth. I think it was John point. Howard. He was in for about nine years, wasn't he? Or something like and, that. Yep. 
10 years, it was a good, steady economic growth, whether you liked him or not. But I, I look, if I was going to take a punt here, Jennifer, my prediction is we'll have a change of leadership. It won't be a change of government, but it'll be a whoever comes in is going to make some big changes based yeah. on all the mistakes in the last three years. Yeah, look, I, I, I sort of do feel that part of the upheaval that we may go through will be some perhaps enlightening enlightening information that comes to to the surface about certain people that um, the public may may be forced to step aside um, after that so we'll wait and see what happens but it I agree I think the astrology agrees with me and I have to agree with the astrology that I think there is going to be some shake-ups um, yeah. generally in the earth and, and in our political system for sure so investors, I would say to you all, um, yes, we have despairing months ahead, don't we? But uh, the time to, to reinvest in our economy is next year. Absolutely. No doubt. And, and there'll be some great opportunities. And would Mercury hit into next year, Janine, as well? No, or it'll all pass by year? then. That's only what's happening this year. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow, so it's going to be a really interesting year next year. And you know what? That cheers me up no end. Because it cheers it, me up too. You can plan ahead, can't you? You can plan ahead and you know things are going to gradually get better. It won't be instant, um, but it will be a whole new way of thinking perhaps and a whole new way of rebuilding society. Yep. And I think... It's um, going to be like a post-war era. Yeah, you know, like the 1950s of rapid growth. Right. So, um, so there'll be yeah, rapid growth, and maybe there has to be new areas that are uh, are reclaimed uh, for people. When I think yeah. about it, if you take 30 years before 1990, what have you got? 1960, we we had an economic boom then. Yeah, it was post war. Yeah, that was when people were having lots of babies. And lots of babies, well lots of food. property. Yep. And people were buying lots of property everywhere. And well, not only that, there was a lot of ma manufacturing, lots yeah. of manufacturing. Lots of people started manufacturing businesses or small businesses started to grow. You know, we made our own clothing, footwear, we weaved our own cloth in those days. You know, it was the swinging 60s from London. Look at the music. The new music that came out at the time with the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and and things like that. So maybe we might even have a revamp of um, new music coming through. Well, it'll certainly be um, a new phase of creativity for Australia, especially when these planets hit our sun, which is our most creative part. So mm. I feel great about it. I, I might be the only one, or you and I might be the only ones who think that, but just as well, just as well we recorded it. Yeah, I think so. Look back next year. Yeah, and I also think the young ones too. The young ones will have a really, really big impact. Um, younger than you and I, I mean, that will have a really big impact on um, rebuilding society and some great new ideas. So, um, and maybe some innovative. Uh, industries to come yeah so yes yes mm. okay all right well, let's leave it there jennifer okay. i hope you have a really nice week ahead and let's have a chat next friday okay see you then keep drinking your tea ta-da bye <laughs>